since the dawn of civilization. The powerful have conspired to twist the course of history to suit their own designs. Like puppeteers, a few shadowy figures could still be pulling the strings of destiny for billions. Those who cry conspiracy are usually mocked at. Sometimes the truth is so obvious it goes unnoticed. Are those merely paranoid fantasies cooked up to feed the appetite of paperback readers and web surfers, but which bear no relation to reality? Or are we living out some perfectly executed plan? Wars, revolutions, social movements, terrorist attacks. Everything is given an official explanation. But perhaps nothing is what it seems to be. Let's dare to unveil the incredible world of secret societies. Of all the secret societies we know of, there is one that stands out from the rest due to certain characteristics that make it especially menacing. It's treacherous tenets, the scandal and the paranoia they've unleashed. More disturbing, the suspicion that since its creation, it has intervened in each and every major world event that has steered the course of history. The Illuminati of Bavaria, the most fearsome secret society in history. More than 200 years ago, here in Germany, in what used to be the independent electorate of Bavaria, a secret society was formed whose objective simply spelled world domination. Its strategy to abolish all religions and governments in order to take control of humanity under a unified state, with no countries, no borders, and under the command of a single leader. Its name? The Illuminati of Bavaria. Perhaps you've never heard of them, or perhaps you have and are familiar with some of the theories that blame them for all the bad things that have befallen us. Theories that intertwine verifiable facts with delirious conspiracy theories that run the gamut from the United States to aliens, but have a common thread in the founding tenet of the Illuminati, the creation of a new world order. And perhaps, and only perhaps, that great jumble of information and disinformation that today pervades the media is also part of a broader sinister plan. The Order of the Illuminati was officially prescribed more than 200 years ago. But if we pay close attention to subsequent events, we shall find an alarming succession of coincidences that suggest strongly that they are still among us, and that their power, far from having waned, is still very much in evidence. To find out just how much is fact and how much is fiction, we shall start off by learning what history has to tell us about this mysterious order. Then we shall investigate what has happened since the order's demise. Finally, we shall draw our own conclusions. On May the 1st, 1776, Adam Weishaupt, a young canon law professor at the University of Bavaria, founded the Order of the Perfectibilists also known as the Illuminati of Bavaria. Though it was influenced by the Illuminist trends of the time, the name of the order was inspired by the Spanish Alumbrados and the French Illumines. Old Gnostic sects that upheld the communion of man and God without the intermediation of the church. Initially, the stated objectives of the Illuminati seemed entirely harmless and philanthropic. To stimulate a human and sociable vision, support virtue where it may be threatened or oppressed by vice, to promote the progress of merit worth people and foster the benefit of those deprived of education. Adam Weishaupt. Little is known of Adam Weishaupt, but he was undoubtedly a mysterious man. Even his name has given rise to speculation. Adam Weishaupt, in German, can be broken down into Adam, the first man, Weis, knowledge or wisdom, Haupt, leader. That is to say, the first man that leads the wise. An entirely fitting name to define his role in the order he established and in the sinister plans he propounded. Adam Weishaupt 
was born in Ingolstadt, Bavaria, in the south of Germany, in 1748. A convert from Judaism, he was raised and educated by Jesuits. A precocious intellectual, at the age of 28, he was dean of the Jesuit University of Canon Law at Ingolstadt. In spite of his apparent religious fervor and Catholic zeal, Weishaupt was obsessed with ancient Egyptian rites and rituals, and at the same time he also maintained regular contact with Freemasons, the historic enemies of the Catholic Church. Like many thinkers of that era, he admired Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who insisted that man was noble and free by nature, and could be governed without the need for religious or established institutions. The only practice that one ought to teach children is that they should never submit to one. Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The Illuminati were created within a Masonic lodge to which Weishaupt belonged. By that time, Freemasonry was already a prestigious secret society of long standing, and its excessive secrecy and closeness to the powers that be had turned it into the ideal nurturing ground for Weishaupt's order, who began to infiltrate it. The Freemasons, good keepers of secrets, would contribute knowingly or otherwise to the Illuminati plan. For his order, Weishaupt borrowed the strict, military-style, hierarchical structure of the Jesuits and divided it into 13 degrees. First level, nursery, preparation, novice, minerval, illuminatus minor. Second level, Freemasonry, subdivided into two orders, symbolic apprentice, Fellow of the Craft, Master Freemason, and Scottish, Illuminatus Major, and Illuminatus de Regens. Third level, Mysteries, subdivided into two orders, Lesser Mysteries, Priest and Regent, and Greater Mysteries, Magus, Rex, and King, or Areopagite. Curiously enough, the order was an incomplete structure. There were many minervals, but the higher hierarchies were never completely filled, and they only existed in Weishaupt's mind, who proclaimed himself king or Aeropagite. Up until the year 1780, the order of the Illuminati was only known within the boundaries of Bavaria. With the inclusion of Baron Nige, an enthusiastic Freemason reformer, new recruits flooded in. New academies for the Nervals were established and strict codes for secrecy enforced. The novices, or Minervals, did not know anyone in the order other than their instructor. If, after three years as Minervals, they were chosen to continue their training, they went on to become Illuminatus Minor and were permitted to know a little more about the real objectives of the order. Weishaupt designed for his order a complex system of codes and aliases that seemed to pre-announce a strategy that would allow them to continue working underground sometime in the future. The Illuminati became a true secret society within another, that is, within Freemasonry itself. It soon became clear that the true objectives of Weishaupt and his Illuminati went far beyond simple altruism. The order was symbolized as the letter O, with a dot in the center. Everyone assumed pseudonyms inspired by Roman and Greek history. Adam Weishaupt, Spartacus. Aaron Nye, Philo. Franz Xavier Zweig, Cato. Marquis of Costanza, Diomedes, and so on. Cities and regions also received coded Hellenic names. Munich, Athens. Frankfurt, Thebes, Bavaria, Greece. Letters were coded with numbers in the lower degrees and with hieroglyphics in the high degrees. Just seven years after he had founded his order, Adam Weishaupt boasted of having more than 600 followers in Bavaria alone and many more in the rest of Europe. The order attracted influential people, including nobles and members of the clergy. 
Paradoxically, active members of the Catholic Church could be found among the ranks of the Illuminati.